Not, not much long after that, Mackie came along. <coughs> it was interesting because I came back here February, I guess it was, and, um, and saw a bunch of folks. And, and a lot of people that I grew up with found out that I had a brother for the first time. <laughs> and uh, Mackie was 15 years older than me, so there was a break and then an accident occurred that I'm pretty pleased with. <laughs> I came along. But I had two distinct lives growing up in Gordon County. There was a life at Redbud and the life after I left Redbud and went to Calhoun. And for some reason after I left Redbud, I rarely came into contact with anyone that I grew up with. And I didn't move. Obviously, we still lived at the same place. But in a small town, you know, as small as Calhoun was then, it's amazing to me that I very rarely, except for a few exceptions, came into contact with all the kids that I went to Redbud. Now, Facebook has changed that. But... Uh, how many here are red butt people? Now, y'all know what I'm saying. Red, yeah, exactly. Look at them. Just breaking their arms, getting them up. All right. That's the red butt. Now, how many are Calhoun associations? Yeah. How many are family and just, yeah. Okay. But uh, to say that I've always liked to read would be stretching it. Um, I do have a passion for reading now, and I, I, I consume books now, but I didn't growing up, and I've always, but I always loved stories and storytelling, and I, and I like being read too, and I vividly remember read, but I vividly remember things, and I do have, a, a, I guess, somewhat of a gift for memory. I remember the first day of school in first grade as clear as day. I can tell you every, where everybody was sitting, who cried and who would not shut up which I wrote about, and, and, uh, and just, I, I remember those things very clearly, but I remember being read to. I remember the box of our children so plain and clear, and, um, but one of those readers was Mr. Irwin, and uh, so let's read around Red Bud. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I, I, uh, I'm going to read a portion of an education. Page 106 is where we'll start. This is a portion of, of going to school at Red Bud. It was in fourth grade that we first changed classes. We rotated for English, social studies, and science. We had assigned seating so we could leave books in our desk. One day, I reached into my desk and found a neatly folded note from a girl. She told me that she liked me and wanted to be my girlfriend. At the bottom of the note, in neat girl handwriting, she wrote, I, lo I like you, do you like me? And there were two options, yes or no, and a box by each. I checked yes and placed the note back into the desk to be retrieved later. I had never considered a girlfriend. Girls were mildly amusing, cried easily, and at times were tough in a fight since they matured more quickly than we boys did. But I found the idea of liking one quite appealing. The exchange of notes continued for several days. She was a fifth grader and I was a fourth grader, so we didn't get to see each other much other than morning recess. We met each other on the playground each morning where she and her friends mostly giggled as I struggled to talk to her. There were enormous tractor tires on the playground that were so large we, we could sit in them. One day she asked me if I would like some sugar the next morning in recess. I told her certainly I would. <laughs> and so she told me that the next morning on the playground that I would get some sugar. Sugar was our commonly used slang for a kiss. I was nervous and embarrassed. We climbed into the big tractor tire with two other kids that liked each other, and she asked me if I was ready. I blushed and nodded my head in the affirmative. She told me to close my eyes, so I dutifully followed her instructions. I puckered for my first kiss. But as quickly as I puckered, she pulled a baggie of sugar from her coat and poured it over my head, and they all burst out laughing. I laughed it off, trying to cover my humiliation, and decided in retrospect that girls were not like us boys. And I didn't like them as much as I thought I did. <laughs> now, about two weeks ago, I was on Facebook and a chat window popped up. I have a question to ask you. Oh, hey, I haven't seen you in 30 years. I have a question to ask you. Well, ask away. Did I pour sugar over your head? So, she's out there and she knows who she is. <laughs> Fifth grade at Red Bud was spent in three little white trailers. We had homeroom and science in one, math in one, and English in the other. Mr. Irwin, who taught English, occupied one of those trailers. Mr. Irwin was the oldest teacher I knew of at Red Bud School. In fact, he had been there so long that he claimed to have planted large willow oak trees in front of the middle school, which had been the original schoolhouse that my mom and daddy attended. 
At that time, they were over 100 feet tall and 3 feet in diameter. He read us some wonderful stories that year. My favorite, of course, was Tom Sawyer. Each day, he would read a few chapters to us. I hung on every word as he read, but there was one problem. After about 10 minutes of reading, he would begin to doze off. <laughs> Most of the boys would start playing pranks, which under normal circumstance or conditions, I would have participated in. But I liked Tom Sawyer so much that it made me mad that he dozed off. Sometimes he would fall so soundly asleep that he began to snore, and the kids would start throwing paper wads and spitballs at him. It was also in fifth grade that I experienced the most embarrassing moment of my life. There were so many there was <clears throat> excuse me. There were many girls in our class that I thought were pretty, but there was one at that time that I was particularly fond of. I'd sit in class and stare at her, just hoping that she'd see me and give some indication that she liked me. This went on week after week with me never getting any attention at all. Now because our classes were in traders, sometimes the teacher had to leave to go to the main building. As would be expected, we ignored the threat she made before leaving and got up and did most anything we wanted after she left. We had gotten into trying to pop each other's backs. One day, the most unexpected thing happened. The teacher left, and this young girl that I had my eye on asked me to pop her back. It was no secret among us boys that I liked her. Heck, we all did. So when she asked, all attention was on me. Now we pop backs by standing behind someone as they cross their arms across their chest. After that, we pick them up and bounce them. <clears throat> it was an opportunity to get closer to a girl than I'd ever been. I was basically going to hug the fifth grade girl of my dreams. Of course, I said okay and nervously went to the front of the class where she awaited me. She folded her arms across her chest and I wrapped my arms around her, pausing ever so briefly to enjoy the moment. And then I lifted her. And on the first bounce, I uncontrollably passed gas. Oh. <laughs> I bounced her about two more times before I had the sense to release her. <laughs> and with each bounce, I did it again. <laughs> She fought loose and ran to her desk disgusted, and I turned redder than our school mascot, the Cardinal, needless to say, I never got close to her again. It's called bearing it off. All right. I talk about liquor in this book, whiskey. There were some funny old charismatic men that drank themselves to death, literally. Um, and I, and I took the opportunity to capture stories um, of that experience. And there are some funny ones. I mean, old man coming back and, you know, my grandfather gave me a 22 rifle because the barrel was bent. He had shot at a squirrel at least 20 times and then the barrel was bent in the gun. It had nothing to do with that pint of liquor he drank before he left to go squirrel hunting. And, and, you know, the, the stories, it would have, I could have never written all of the stories associated with funny things that old men did in bib overalls and, and leather hunting boots drinking liquor. But I felt that I had to be honest about it and tell the other side of the liquor because it has consequences. I felt obligated to tell some portion of that, of that side of the story. Um, this was a uh, somewhat of a difficult part, very sensitive, uh, obviously with our family, and, and I struggled with what to put in and what to leave out and how to, uh, to make it, the point clearly understood that it isn't all fun and games and that there is, there is a, a sad, sad side uh, to the alcohol. So I'm gonna read a portion of a chapter called Demon in a Bottle. <clears throat> 